Abraham Lincoln is a man who changed the course of history and is considered the second founder of the United States of America. Lincoln began his life from a simple cottage in Kentucky on February 12, 1809 AD, and he worked in several professions, including hunting, logging, farming, trade and law. Finally, he decided to get involved in politics. Where he became a member of Congress, then became president of the Republic in the elections of 1860 AD. His presidency was difficult. He insisted on the abolition of slavery, immortalizing his name in history, which prompted 11 southern states to secede, so he entered a war to bring it back to the Union, but he did not live long to be content with his victory, as he was assassinated in 1865 AD, and Lincoln was right when he said that almost all men can bear hardships, but if you want to test a man's mettle, give him power. Abraham Lincoln was the 16th President of the United States of America from 1861 AD to 1865 AD. He is one of the most highly polished American personalities, and Hollywood contributed to polishing his image through a movie bearing his name, which was produced and directed by the Jewish Steven Spielberg. The film was produced in 2012 AD, and it focuses on aspects that appear to some to be luminous in Lincoln's life, until some called him, the prophet of freedom, and the author of the book, 100 Greats of the Nation of Islam Changed the Course of History, by writer Jihad al turbani considered Lincoln one of the greats of the Nation of Islam. Away from al turbanis passionate passion, which he made as a guide for him in writing his book, and away from Hollywood, which demonizes whomever it wants and shines whomever it wants according to a policy that serves the Jews and their causes, we ask ourselves a question that arises strongly in our minds, why do Jews love Abraham Lincoln? The answer is simply that his origins are Jewish, so his name Abraham is a Jewish name with distinction, Christians do not give their children this name, and Jewish accounts mention that Lincoln was named after his grandfather Abraham, and that his third grandfather was named Mordecai, and that his family name, Lincoln, is after the name of the British town from which he immigrated his Jewish grandparents lived there. He is of Jewish origin, and when his grandfather arrived in America, he pretended to be a Christian. The issue of the family's conversion to Christianity remains a mystery. Did they really convert or remain on their Judaism? We are not certain of this or that, but what we are certain of is that Lincoln was not a devout Christian, and his relationship was good, even excellent, with the Jews. Historian Michael Lawrence says in his book Power, Faith, and imagination, America in the Middle East from 1776 until today in a meeting with Abraham Lincoln in 1863 AD, the leading churchman, Henry Wentworth Monk, objected to the reality of the Jews, and said, there can be no lasting peace. World unless civilized nations atone for 2,000 years of persecution of the Jews by returning them to their national home in Palestine. Although it was never known about President Lincoln that he was religious, he agreed immediately and said, returning the Jews to their national home in Palestine is a noble dream that many Americans share. He added, when we win the war, Americans will once again be able to see vision and dream of dreams, and lead the world to achieve them. Rabbi Isaac, author of the book Union Prayer and founder of the Hebrew Union College, mentions that they held a mass for President Lincoln, in which he said, Lincoln considered himself bone of our bones and flesh of our flesh. He considered himself a descendant of the Hebrew lineage. Isaac mentions that Lincoln said these words in his presence, and that Lincoln preserved many features of the Hebrew dynasty in his face and personality. From the foregoing, we know the secret of the interest of the Jews in Abraham Lincoln and polishing his image, on the grounds that he is a liberator of slaves, and this is a big lie believed by most people, and it is what prompted Al Turbani to consider Lincoln a great one of the greats of the nation of Islam. What is the story of the liberation of slaves? The story of the liberation of slaves, as told by many sources such as The Book of Slavery and the Slave Trade by John Henry Clack and The Book of International Crimes and the Authority of Punishment by the writer ABD Alwad Muhammad, is that its beginning was before the birth of Lincoln, as some European countries abolished slavery and some banned the sale and purchase of slaves in 1792, Denmark banned slavery on its lands and liberated all slaves. In 1814, European countries met at the Vienna Conference and decided to ban slave trade. 
In America, voices calling for the liberation of slaves were raised, and a treaty was concluded between several American states called the Missouri Compromise to liberate the slaves. In Canada, slaves were liberated in 1834 AD. Canada followed the North American states. The issue is a bigger issue than one person who wanted to liberate the slaves. Rather, it is a global issue as the Western countries started racing to liberate the slaves. The United States of America is very late in this matter, and Lincoln used it for purely political purposes. The sources in the library of the U.S. Congress preserve many of his speeches, in one of which he said, If I can save the Union without freeing any slave, I will do it, and if I can save it by freeing all the slaves, I will do it. Through this text quoted from Lincoln's speech before Congress, it becomes clear to us that the slave liberation paper was used by him to put pressure on the southern states that depend mainly on agriculture, and slaves are considered the mainstay of the economy in them, while the northern states depend on industry and machinery, as slaves are a burden on their masters, and there is no need for slaves in an industrial society. This trump card is what contributed greatly to the victory of the North over the South. The issue of liberating slaves is a political and military issue par excellence. As for Lincoln's view of slaves, it is a look of contempt and disdain, he says in one of his speeches to Congress. I will say, I have not and will not be on the side of bringing about social and political equality in any form between the white and black races, and I have not and never will be on the side of making the electors or members of the jury black, nor qualifying them to hold offices nor marrying them to whites and I will say in addition to this that there is a physical difference between the white race and the black race, because of which I believe that the common life between the two races will forever be prevented in terms of social and political equality, and I, like any other man, prefer that the office of the presidency be in the hands of the white race. Are these words coming from a prophet of freedom or from a racist demon? And did the matter stop when Lincoln despised the black race? and considered it to be of a lower degree than the white race? We read the answer in his relationship with the Native Americans. Lincoln was a hateful racist against the Native Americans, and in his youth he led a gang in the Black Hawk War against the Native Americans, and when he became president he believed that they should be eliminated and expand westward at the expense of their lands. In the year 1862 AD, the American army was able to subdue all the Dakota tribes by force, and arrested a thousand warriors, and executed 38 of them under the signature of Lincoln himself. In one day, the largest execution in American history took place and the Dakota Indians were expelled from their ancestral lands in Minnesota to Nebraska and South Dakota. On September 23, 1862 AD, the Battle of Woodlake took place, where the army completely crushed the Dakota Indians, and the rest of the Indian warriors surrendered after the battle and they were subjected to comic military trials, then hundreds of them were sentenced to death, and the rest of the Indians, men, women, and children, were imprisoned for five years, during which a third of them died in confinement from contagious diseases such as smallpox, and those who remained were expelled to Nebraska. There are many massacres that are discussed at length, such as the Sand Creek Massacre that occurred on November 29, 1864 A.D., in which 800 people from the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes were killed, and the bodies of the dead were mutilated, and their heads were scalped to obtain the financial reward, $25 a dollar for every Red Indian scalp, granted by the government of Abraham Lincoln, the liberator of slaves, the prophet of freedom, and one of the greats of the Nation of Islam.